I hope you guys are all doing well. The theme of the week is aquatic animals. Um, so for today's story time, I'm going to be reading a book called Seashore. So here you go. Um, so get comfortable, find a nice spot, a nice soft spot to sit, get your wiggles out. All right, now I'm going to read Seashore by Hannah Wilson and Simone Mendez. So this book is about animals who live on the seashore, um, animals who live in the water, but also animals um, that live on the seashore that eat our aquatic animal friends. So first one, in a rock pool. So many creatures live in rock pools along the seashore. When the tide is out, there might not be much water inside of the pool. When the tide is in, the rock pool fills up and bright anemones uncurl their tentacles. So let's see what we have here. We have a starfish, like my earrings. We have a closed anemone, so it's closed up tight because there's no water in there. We have some cool creatures hanging along the rocks, not sure what those are yet. And we have a seashell with a little friend inside. Let's see, we have a few questions. Who lives inside is a shell? How does an anemone catch its dinner? And which creatures cling to the rocks? Let's find out. So um, a hermit crab lives inside the empty shell um, of a snail. The hard shell protects the crab's soft body. So we have our little hermit crab friend right there. The anemone sticks out its poisonous tentacles to sting tiny creatures and push them towards its mouth. And limpets, barnacles, and mussels grow shells and attach themselves to the rocks. So this is a submerged rock pool. Now we have our creatures down here. The anemone is open, so you can see their tentacles. You have a little fish, it's called a blenny. Um, right here, these are, these are called limbits. These are barnacles, and these are some mussels. Let's see the next page. Okay, um, the salt marsh. So when the sea floods the land, salty marshes can form. Um, thick with rushes and weeds, they are home to many different birds, including flamingos. And our flamingos eat on a little underwater friend. So let's find out. This is a flamingo chick. They are gray. These are some big adult flamingos. How does a flamingo seashore? Why are flamingos pink? And which animals live in salt marshes? Let's find out. A flamingo stands on one leg to keep warm and dry and to rest. Flamingos are pink because they eat so many pink shrimp. So our little um, water friend is the shrimp, and that's what our flamingos eat, and that is why they are pink. Tiny little shrimps down here. Um, and in addition to birds, insects, and snakes hide among the watery plants of the salt marsh. So we have some other birds, so a green-winged teal, a little duck, we have a dragonfly, and we have a gulf water snake. A snowy seashore. In the coldest parts of the world, animals live by the sea to hunt for food in its icy waters. Thick layers of fat, fur, and feathers keep the animals warm. So we have some walruses. This is a male walrus called a bull, and this is a female walrus and her pup, it's a little baby. And we have a friend over here, the polar bear. So why does a polar bear live on the ice? Which animals have tusks like an elephant and whiskers like a cat? And how do penguins splash into the sea? So 
So a polar bear lives on the ice so that it can hunt for seals. It can hunt seals for food. So here's a polar bear about to jump on the seal. Um, walruses have tusks, we see here. Um, a female walrus has shorter tusks. Oh, this is a mommy, and her tusks are shorter. And a baby walrus has no tusks at all, because they're still growing. And penguins like to waddle and slide on their stomach and dive into the water. And all of these animals here eat things like fish. Um, and then you have a polar bear who's eating a seal. So next page. Oops. On the beach. So when a wave washes up on the beach, it drops shells and seaweed onto the sand. The wave also leaves behind tiny creatures for crabs and wading birds to eat. We have a cool sand castle, my favorite thing to build when I'm at the beach. We have some hungry seagulls. We have a crab, you can see that there. And we have a hidden starfish hiding. So why are crabs difficult for seagulls to catch? How many legs does a starfish have? And what can you find on the beach? Let us find out. All these are awesome questions. Crabs are difficult to catch because they have hard shells. They also move side to side, which confuses the birds. A starfish usually has five legs. So one, two, three, four, five. Five legs. Pretty, um, if a crab or a fish eats one leg of the starfish, Another may grow. So pretty seashells and clumps of slimy seaweed wash up on the beach. If you see a jellyfish, don't touch it. It can sting. So things that the water washes onto the beach are shells, so a lot of cool looking shells, some seaweed, and jellyfish. Jellyfish are really cool. Okay. Salty swamps. So in hot parts of the world, salty, uh, salty swamps called mangrove swamps meet the sea. They fill with plants and trees that are home to fish, frogs, crabs, and furry animals such as monkeys and otters. So right here we have a fishing cat. Right here is a long-tailed Macau monkey. Um, some more monkeys in the trees. So do monkeys swim in the sea? How does a fishing cat catch fish? And how do smooth-coated otters take care of their babies? Some monkeys swim in the sea to cool down or to hunt for fish and crabs for dinner. The fishing cat taps the water with its paws, pretending to be an insect. When a fish comes to investigate, the cat swoops it out and eats it. And then the mother and the father otter dig a burrow near the water. Inside, the babies are born um, in the burrow. So right here, you have two otters, mother and father otters. You have uh, an otter pup outside of the burrow. So they're exploring. And then you have them learning how to swim. They cool. All right, next page. The, oh, the rocky islands. So um, many seashore animals live on the island far out at sea. They have their babies on land amongst the rocks and cliffs, but dive deep into the ocean to find food. So you have some iguanas sunbathing. You have a crab over here. I have another iguana in the water. So, which lizards live by the sea? Why are some marine iguanas pink and white? And where do puffins make their nest? If you don't know what a puffin is, it's right here. Let's find out. So, marine iguanas 
dive into the cold sea to eat sea plants. And then they sunbathe on the rocks to get warm again. So some male marine iguanas turn pink to attract female iguanas. All the lizards spray sea salt out of their nose. So they spray salt from their nose. And this, is, this makes their faces white because of all the salt. And puffins, little puffin friends over here, they make nests by digging burrows on grassy cliff tops. So here's a mother and her baby chicks. These are them inside a burrow. And these are them diving for fish. Nighttime on the beach. So the seashore can be safer for some animals at night. Predators, these are animals that hunt other animals for food, find it hard to hunt in the darkness. Bats, however, are excellent nighttime hunters. So we have some turtles here coming out of the water. There's the turtles on the beach. Um, why does a turtle like the beach? How many eggs does a loggerhead turtle lay? These are loggerhead turtles. And which fisherman hunts at night? Let's find out. Okay, so a turtle likes to lay her eggs in the sandy burrow on the beach. The turtle lays about 100 eggs that look like ping pong balls. So here's a turtle laying eggs in a little little burrow in the sand and here's all her eggs. A fisherman bat or a bullfrog bat hunts at night. It flies along the beach and it catches fish at the sea. So you can see that here. Um, it swoops across the water so it goes over the water. Um, it snatches up a fish with its little claws and then it flies away with its food. the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, story time all about seashore animals. I would love to know what your favorite seashore animal is. So if you had a favorite animal that we talked about in the book, go ahead and draw a picture and then ask your mommies and daddies to take a picture of it and post it in the comments below. So here's mine. I drew it starfish, one of my favorite animals, and then I drew a jellyfish. So go ahead and draw your favorite sea animals, seashore animals, and then ask your mommies and daddies to take a picture and post it in the comments below. I would love to see all your beautiful artwork. Bye!